Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Job. So there was a dude named Job, not Job, Job. And he was super blessed. Like he had a ton of kids and crops and cattle and crap. And he was just living like Larry. And God was all like, hey, yo, Satan, come look at this. Mm. See my boy Job over here? He killing the game. He worships me all the time. And Satan was like, well, yeah, of course he worships you all the time. You literally gave him everything. And God's like, okay, bet. You can take whatever you want away from him, but like, don't hurt him. And Satan's like, big facts. And so Satan kills like his entire family and he demolishes like all of his crops and cattle and crap so job literally has nothing but job still worships god told you Ugh. and satan's like uh, okay but if you let me hurt him he won't worship you and god's like okay bet but don't kill him and satan's like facts so satan's like Ratatata. and job gets all these like sores and boils all over Ugh. it's so gross and even job's wife is like bro just curse god and job's like no you ho and then job's three friends show up and they start giving him some really bad advice and eventually job is like no are you kidding me god is good and i'm trash and god is like yup called Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Genesis. So there's a dude named Abraham, right? And one day God's all like, Psst, yo, Abraham, yo, what's up? You see your son Isaac over there? Well, yeah. Look, I need you to sacrifice him to me. What? Kill my own? Are you kidding me, God? I'm God. I don't kid. Fair point. So Abraham's like, yo, Isaac, let's go build an altar to God, okay? And he's like, bet. Tight. All right, you grab the firewood and I'll get the uh, sacrifice. So Isaac grabs the firewood and the two of them start climbing up a hill to build an altar. Oh, dad, you forgot the sacrifice. Uh, we're almost there, son. But where's, where's the sacrifice, Dad? Dad, where, where's the sacrifice? Just a little further now, son. So they get to the top and they build the altar. Dad, what, why, are you, why are you tying me up? <laughs> why are you tying me up, Dad? Alrighty, now just pop a squat on the altar, Dad. And Abraham pulls out a knife and, uh, hey, God, mm. this is your turn. Oh, oh, right. Uh, Abraham, don't, <clears throat> don't do it, okay? I was testing you. You passed. Oh, facts. Oh, thank God. Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of First Kings. So there's a prophet named Elijah, right? And he was chilling in a town where everybody was worshiping both God and also a spirit named Baal. And Elijah's all like, my dudes, you can't do that. You gotta pick. And they were like, you cereal? And he was like, dead ass. And they were like, okay, but then how are we gonna pick who to worship? And Elijah's like, ding, I've got an idea. What if we set up like a little, like a little competition of sorts? So, all right, hear me out. Like you guys build an altar to Baal, okay? And I'll build one to God. And whichever one catches fire, that one's, you know, god and they're like yeah, yeah okay we can get behind that but so they set up their altars and it's Baal's turn first and they're all like oh great Baal's come down and set fire and personally i like to imagine that Baal was somewhere like y'all hear something no oh, okay and they're doing their thing and elijah like an absolute savage is like you know what? i bet Baal's in the bathroom guys i bet he's just taking a nap for real he said that verse 27 so no fire comes from Baal, and then elijah's all like okay my daughter he even douses the thing in water just to prove his point and he's like i gotta do your thing and god's like skadoosh Pew. Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes with the book of John. So there's a blind dude, right? And everyone knew him as that one blind dude that was like super blind. And one day, Jesus and his disciple squad were walking by and the squad was all like, yo, J-Dog, who sinned to make this guy blind? Was it him or was it his mom and dad? And Jesus was like, homies, it's neither. This dude is blind so that God's works can be displayed on him. And they're like, oh, okay, okay. And Jesus is like, watch this, y'all. And he spits on the ground, like, oh, he spits on the ground. And the blind guy's like, whoa, y'all, did he just spit on the ground? They're like, yeah, he just spit on the ground. The blind guy's like, okay, just checking. And Jesus starts making mud with his spit and they're like huh interesting and jesus is like okay take off your blind person glasses and he's like okay and he does it and then he puts the spit mud on his eyes and everybody's like ugh. And he's like bro and jesus is like okay now go wash it off and he's like okay you literally just put it on me but okay and he washes it off and he's like oh my gosh you guys get in here and they're like yo what he's like i can see you cereal dead grass and then the pharisees who were like the super duper religious dudes saw the whole thing and they were like um jesus did you just work on the sabbath that's against the rules you Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of 1 Kings. So there's a super wise king named Solomon, right? And one day two prostitutes come up to him with a question. Let's call them Sandra and Debbie. So Debbie's like, Solomon, listen, okay? Sandra and I both have a baby. And Sandra over here accidentally killed her baby and then swapped it out with mine. Tell her to give me my baby. And Sandra's like, Solomon, she is lying, okay? The living kid is mine and the dead kid is hers. And Debbie's like, um, no, the living kid is mine and the dead kid is hers. And Solomon's like, huh, it's a sticky situation we got here. All right, tell you what what if we just you know catching my drift no no you know what if we just and then and debbie's like 
are you talking about chopping my baby in half? And Solomon's like, well, yeah. And Sandra's like, well, it sounds logical to me. Well done, king. Well done. Thank you. And Sage is like, no, okay, I'm sorry. Just give her the baby. I'd rather him not die. And Solomon's like, aha, Deborah, can I call you Deborah? Take your off. Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Genesis. So y'all remember my guy Abraham, right? So one day God's like, yo, Abraham. He's like, what's up, God? And God's like, okay, listen, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are super duper evil. And I have decided that I'm gonna destroy them and abraham's like okay listen i'm with you on this except my nephew lot actually lives there and he's a good guy and god's like yeah you're right well as it turns out lot and his family are actually the only good people in the entire city so i'll save them because i love you homie oh stop it i love you too g man so god sends two angels down to lot and the angels are like lot so god sent us to tell you to take your kids take your wife because god gonna be destroying everybody up in here and lot's like oh shoot yeah okay honey what and angels are like now bro time is of the essence right okay here we go so lot and his wife and his daughters leave the city and God starts raining literal fire on Sodom and Gomorrah and then the angels are like oh guys one more thing God told us to tell you to not look back at the city like at all and they're like yeah okay that's cool and Lot's wife is like I could take a peek and so she peeks behind and she immediately turns into a literal pillar of salt and Lot's like huh Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of First Samuel. So there's a kid named Samuel, right? And he was living with a dude named Eli, kind of like a Tony Stark, Peter Parker, father figure type of vibe. So Samuel goes to bed one night, and while Samuel's sleeping, God is like, Psst, Samuel. And Samuel gets up and he goes to Eli, and he's like, Yeah, Eli, what's up? What do you need? And Eli's like, Sorry, what? You called for me. Uh, no, I didn't. You didn't? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Never mind. So he goes back to bed, and then a second time, God is like, Psst, Samuel. And Samuel's like, Whoa. And he gets up and he's like, Yeah, Eli, what? And Eli's like, What? And Samuel's like, Bro, you called for me. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Ugh. Okay. My bad. Okay. Good night. And he goes back to bed, and then a third time, God is like, Psst. Samuel and Samuel's like that's it and he storms into Eli and he's like quit playing my guy what do you freaking want and then Eli actually realized that it was God and he was like oh Samuel you idiot I'm not calling you God is calling you and he's like oh yeah that makes more sense yeah so next time God calls you be like what's up Lord and then listen and Samuel's like what's up Lord and then listen got it thanks so he goes back to bed and God's like Psst, Samuel and Samuel's like yeah Lord what's up I hear you and God's like okay awesome Sammy I need you to tell Eli that I'm gonna punish his family oh shoot Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Luke. So Jesus is telling his disciples that they should love their neighbor. And one of them's like, okay, dumb question, Jesus. Who's my neighbor? Because I live in a condo upstate. And Jesus is like, you know what? I'm going to tell y'all a story, okay? It's a metaphor. They're like, metaphor, facts. And Jesus is like, okay, once upon a time, there's a dude traveling through a really sketchy part of town with a little rat -ta 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 action, you know what I'm saying? And he actually got mugged and he's just left there to die. I've been left here to die. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But then a priest walks by. Oh, phew. But the priest actually just goes around him. Aw. But then a Levite walks by oh levites are homies yes but the levite just goes around him oh rats but then a samaritan walks by Ugh, samaritans important side note everybody hated samaritans absolutely despised them so let's call him i don't want to name any real people so let's call him donald so the samaritan donald walks by and he sees him and he rushes over and he binds up all his wounds and he gives him water he even puts him up in a really nice hotel like no motel six type ish like a hampton resort with a continental breakfast and then he says to the hotel manager take care of my guy whatever you need just do it and i'll pay for it and the manager's like bet Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Jonah. So my boy Jonah was a prophet. And one day God was all like, yo, Brona. He was like, what's up, G? God's like, you know that evil city Nineveh? He's like, oh, yeah, I know them. They suck. And God's like, yeah, look, I need you to go to them and tell them to repent. And Jonah's like, okay, God, like, I'll totally do that. But on a completely separate note, I'm going to just head out real fast. I got to... You know, I got a thing, so uh, good good talk. And God's like, are you kidding me? And Jonah runs in the exact opposite direction. He gets on a boat to a city called Tarshish. And while Jonah's napping on this boat, God blows a huge storm onto the sea. And the boat crew is like, Jonah, wake up, ho, start praying. We about to get iced. And Jonah's like, oh, crap. And the crew's like, wait a second, I've got an idea. Let's cast lots to find out whose fault this storm is. By the way, casting lots is like rolling dice and being like, if it's a five, it's Dave's fault. Aww. So they cast lots and the lot falls on Jonah. Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, look, part two of Jonah's story is coming tomorrow, but if you want a sneak peek, you gotta check out the book. It's been out for like 2,000 years. It's really good. Bible stories with Liv, the story of Jonah, part two. So they're all freaking out on the ship and the lot falls on Jonah. It's Jonah's fault. There's only one thing to do. And they yeet Jonah into the ocean and the storm stops immediately. Huh. And Jonah's floundering around in the water when a massive fish comes and literally swallows Jonah whole. And Jonah is chilling in the belly of this big A fish for three days. Talk about time to think. While he's in the fish, he's like, Hey, God. And God's like, yeah. And he was like, I was so dumb. If I ever get out of this fish, I'm gonna go straight to Nineveh. And God's like, that's my boy. And the fish is like, Hoo, Hoo, Bleh. 
and he spits Jonah back onto the land. Ew. Uh. And Jonah goes to Nineveh and he's like, Nineveh, you evil dudes, repent from your stupid evil ways or else God will destroy you. And Nineveh's like, okay. And they all repent and they turn their ish around. And God's like, yeah, get it to it. I, I won't destroy you. I'm gonna give you another chance. Another one. And Jonah's pissed. He's like, God, are you dead grass, dead cereal right now? They were so horrible and evil and they deserve to be punished. And God's basically like, listen, Brona, I'm the God of second chances. I give you a second chance. I'm gonna give them one too. And Jonah's like, I'll shoot you. Bible stories with live. Today's story comes from the book of Genesis. So there's a super old blind dude named Isaac and he and his wife Becky have two twins named Jacob and Esau. So one day Isaac is like, Esau, since you're the oldest and I'm gonna die soon, I need to give you an important blessing. But first, go make me an absolutely delish meal. And Esau's like, bet. But mom Becky was eavesdropping and she goes into Jacob and she's like, Jacob, you deserve the blessing, son. Let's trick your dad into giving it to you. And Jacob's like, silly mom, tricks are for kids. Yeah, sorry, okay, yeah, I'll do it. But mom, Esau is so hairy and I'm baby smooth. Won't dad feel me? and know that I'm not Esau and Becky's like let's put some goat skin on you and Jacob's like hell yeah mom so Becky preps the delish meal and Jacob puts on some goat skins and he goes into Isaac and he's like oh hey dad uh, it's your son Esau I'm ready for the blessing and, and Isaac's like okay thank you son but let me touch you and Jacob's like uh that's weird but okay and Isaac feels the goat skin and he's like who are you really and Jacob's like dad I am Esau and Isaac's like wonderful and then he blesses him and then Esau comes in ready for the blessing Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Daniel. So we got a homie named Daniel, right? And he and God were tight. Like we're talking a ride or die relation here. And Daniel was also the number two dude to the literal king, King Darius. Now one day King Darius's other officials were like, man, I wish there was some way we could screw over Daniel since King Darius likes him more than us. Oh, 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 I've got it. And they come up with a plan. So these officials go to King Darius and they're like, hey, Mr. The King, Sir Dude, Boss Man. And he's like, what's poppin'? They're like, your most excellency, we think you should pass a new law. Okay, okay, and what would that new law be? Well, your kingliness, we think that you deserve all praise. And so you should make it illegal to worship anyone or anything or any, I don't know, God that isn't you. And King Darius is like, yeah, okay, I like the sound of that. Make it happen. They're like, yes, and they make it a law. Now Daniel, who loves God, goes to his room and he starts praying and he prays literally so much, like so much prayer is happening in this room. And the sneaky, sneaky officials spy on him and they see him praying and they go to King Darius. Part two is coming, y'all get absolutely hyped, probably tomorrow, but no guarantees. Bible stories with Liv. The story of Daniel, part two. So the officials that caught Daniel praying race over to King Darius and they're like, Mr. The King, Daniel broke the law, no cap. Talk about sus. What? Yeah, we just saw him praying to God and everyone knows that you can't undo a law. Everyone knows that. Yeah, everyone does know that. Well, shoot, man, that's a major bummer sesh. Okay, well, I guess throw him into the pit of lions. I'll find another number two. They're like, oh, hells yeah. And they grab him and they chuck him into a pit full of hungry, hungry lions. But God's like, alrighty boys, let's do this. And he sends an angel down to the lion's den with Daniel and the angel goes skadoosh to the lion so they can't do anything to Daniel and Daniel's like ah ha ha this is freaking sick and he just chills down there with the lions and the angel the next morning King Darius comes back and he sees Daniel still alive and hikey vibing and he's like whoa what and he makes a decree that my kingdom from now on will worship the god of Daniel ah hell yeah uh, heaven yeah heaven yeah my bad moral of the story don't worry about passing the world's vibe check pass god's vibe check Bible stories with Luke. Today's story comes from the book of Luke. So Jesus is like, what's up, squad? They're like, what's poppin'? J-Dog's like, I'm finna tell you guys a metaphor story. And they're like, duh. And Jesus is like, once upon a time, there was a dad with two sons, Kevin and Dave. And Dave is all like, yo, pops, give us each our share of your property. And dad's like, okay, sons, here you go. And Dave's like, let's go. And he immediately goes and he sells the share away to gamble and get absolutely plastered and basically squanders the entire thing. Then a famine strikes in the land and no one has any food, including Dave, because he threw away his fortune to literally turn up. And he ends up working for a pig farmer and he eating with the pigs. Finally, one day he's like, gosh, I'm so stupid. I need to go back to my dad. And he goes back home. And as soon as his dad sees him, he leaps up and he runs him and he hugs him. And he's like, Dave, you're back. I can't believe it. And his dad throws him this huge party. But Kevin, on the other hand, was not so joyous. Kevin went to dad and he was like, dad, are you being dead grass right now? I've been here this whole time. And then you throw a party for Dave, the screw up of the family. And dad's like, Kevin, you don't get it. Dave was lost, but now he's found. That is a reason to celebrate. The end. I don't get it. Ugh. Bible stories with Liv. Today's story comes from the book of Genesis. So this was way at the beginning of time and everyone spoke one language. One language is spoken only one. Hello, good sir. Do you understand me this day? Why, yes, I do. Well, good day. And everyone just vibed with one language and God was like, yeah. Then these people on earth were like, hold up. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. 
Hmm. What if we built a tower that was so freaking tall that it reached heaven and then everyone will be able to see us and our names will be on billboards everywhere and everyone will know us and worship us because we're the freaking best. They were all like, bet, let's do it. And so they start building this tower essentially to be God. And God is like, bitch, are you? Ugh, you gotta be kidding me. And he goes, skadoosh to the people. Let's see what happened. Flog and Schnark Deloitte plead a scoping. Gerida? Schnark Deloitte plead a scoping. Blaro sevia con quimienta. Fladendaro. Gleigen schnu? Ere plage to marverite. Fleikenro? Tanto rosca? Gere clavonissimo. And no one knew what anyone else was saying. That's why they call it the Tower of Babel. Because they were all... They were all babbling. Do you get it? No? Okay. Well, also, that's why we have a bunch of different languages today. Because forever ago, a bunch of dudes tried to one-up God. Bible stories with Liv. Today's story is going to be the story of the entire Bible in under a minute. Let's get it. So we open on nothing. Nothing exists except for God. And God goes, pew, and creates everything. And it's good. Humans, part of God's creation, are inherently good. But then they F everything up. And the relationship between God and humans is broken. Time goes on and God gives humans the law. Basically, how to be perfect for dummies. Spoiler alert, it's impossible to be perfect. Humans keep flipping off God. And God is still faithful and good to them. There are a couple of humans called prophets that can speak directly to God and tell people what God says. The prophets say that a dude is going to come that's going to fix God and man's broken relationship. A bunch of years later, enter Jesus. Jesus is a human, but he's also God. He lives a perfect life on earth he literally does nothing wrong and humans still sentence him to the death penalty and kill him taking all what we deserve but three days after he dies he actually comes back to life and then a hot minute later he floats up into the air and disappears but not before sending the holy spirit who is also god and is meant to personally help humans the world goes all topsy-turvy and with the help of the holy spirit in the first church the news of jesus spreads like wildfire people were getting killed and tortured for saying this stuff but they kept telling everyone and we're still telling people today finally god promises to return to earth again but this time it's going to be absolutely lit and all evil will finally be punished for being the absolute worst the end Whew. stories with Liv. The story of Joseph from Genesis, part one. So we got a homie named Jacob, right? And Jacob has 12 sons. Not two, not 69, 12. I don't need you to know any of their names except for Joseph, okay? Joseph was daddy's favorite. Like, Jacob totally favored him over the rest. And one day, Jacob was all like, Jill, I have a gift for you, my son. I'm giving you this dope grass coat. Dope grass coat? Dope grass coat. And Joseph's all like, what, what? 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 And the 11 other brothers are all like, you gotta be kidding me. And then Joseph goes to bed and the next morning he goes to his brothers and he's like, bros, I gotta tell you the craziest dream I had last night. And they're all like, ugh. And Joseph's all like, okay, listen, we were all sheaves of grain, right? Uh-huh. And you guys all bowed to me and I reigned over you guys as king. Oh, piss off, mate. But you, ugh, fine. Joseph goes to sleep again and the next morning he's like, bros, I had another dream. And they're all like, oh, great. And Joseph's like, mom and dad were the sun and the moon and you guys were 11 stars. And let me guess, we all bowed before, you all bowed before me. Yeah. And I over you all as king. Oh, screw you, Joe. And they went off and they were like, you guys, we should totally kill Joseph. I agree. We should totally commit homicide. Yes. Okay. Part two is Bible stories with Liv. The story of Joseph, part two. So Joseph's brothers just decided to absolutely ice Joseph. And they were plotting his murder like, you guys, what if we kill him and then we yeet his body into a pit? Genius. God tier. Big facts, bro. But one of the brothers named Reuben secretly cared about Joseph and he didn't want him dead. So Reuben was like, you guys, hear me out. What if we, you know, uh, didn't kill him? And the brothers are like, bro, that... That, that's like the whole point though and Reuben's like see I get that but what if we chuck him into a pit and we leave him for animals to kill him so then we don't have to and they're like oh now you're talking nice one Reuben yeah thanks guys but secretly Reuben was planning on going and saving Joseph from the pit after they all left so the brothers hide out and they see Joseph coming and they jump him and they rip off his coat from dad and they beat him up and then they yeet him into a pit and then a caravan of Ishmaelites other random people, it doesn't matter, came by on camels and the brothers were like, ding, idea. And they sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites so they could get a little dough, a little coin out of their homicide. And isn't that what murder's really all about? Part three is coming. Bible stories with Liv. The story of Joseph, part three. So the brothers sell Joseph away to the Ishmaelites and he rides off as their prisoner. And later that night, Reuben goes to save Joseph from the pit, but he's like, what? Where's Joseph? And he rips his clothes and he cries. Meanwhile, the brothers dip Joseph's coat into goat's blood and they take it to Jacob and they're like, dad, Joseph was eaten by wild animals. Isn't that so sad? <sighs> Dude, shut up. So sad? And Jacob's like, no. And the brothers are like, hell yeah. So the Ishmaelites actually sell him to this Egyptian officer named Potiphar. Hey, Potiphar. Hey. Now God and Joseph were straight homies, right? And God God made it so that everything Joseph did was absolutely bomb. Now, Potiphar saw that God made everything Joseph did absolutely bomb. So he was like, hey, oh, Joseph, what's crack a lacking? He's like, I'm gonna make you the head of all my household, okay? Now you're in charge of everything. Everything? Everything. Sick. So Joseph was in charge of the whole place. And sure enough, everything was absolutely fire because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Now, Joseph was a good looking dude. It was a whole three course meal. Joseph puts Noah back to shame. Sorry, Noah. And who noticed that Joseph was one tasty piece of ass? Potiphar's wife. This cannot go well.
Bible Stories with Liv, the story of Joseph, part four. So Joseph is a snack and a half, right? And the wife of Joseph's boss, Potiphar, takes notice of this. And she waltzes up to Joseph one day and she's like, come on, sleep with me, Joseph. And he's like, dude, no. And the next day she's like, just sleep with me. And again, he's like, no, okay. And the next day she's like, sleep with me. And every day he's like, bro, no, I'm not gonna sleep with my boss's wife. That is so messed up. Come on, Joseph, just sleep with me. And she grabs his sweatshirt. What, no, let go of me. She's like, no, let go, no, just have sex with me. And he wiggles out of the sweatshirt and he runs away butt naked. Buck naked? But I don't know. And Potiphar's wife has the sweatshirt in her hand and she quickly devises a cunning plan. She takes the sweatshirt to her husband Potiphar and she's like, Potiphar, yeah, what's up, baby? You know your servant Joseph, the one who you put in charge of like everything? Oh yeah, I love that dude. She's like, he just tried to sleep with me. What? Mm-hmm. He came into my room and he took off his sweatshirt and he was about to do some nasty, nasty stuff to me when I screamed out, no, yes. I screamed out and he ran away, but he left his sweatshirt behind. Potiphar was pissed. How dare my trusted servant try to sleep with my wife? That's my wife. <laughs> Joseph, whoa. And Potiphar throws Joseph into jail. Bible stories with Liv. The story of Joseph, part five. So Joseph is thrown into prison for something that he didn't do. And while he's in there, two other dudes get thrown into prison with him by Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh's cupbearer and Pharaoh's baker. What's up, homies? My name's Joseph. Hey, my name's cupbearer. What's up? I'm baker. So one night in prison, they all go to bed and then the cupbearer and the baker have the most crazy vivid dreams. And they wake up and they're like, bro, I had the most insane dream. Bro, me too. And Joseph's like, homies, I'm totally tight with God so I can interpret them for you. For real? For real? For real? Bet. So the cupbearer is like, okay, so I dreamt that there was this vine, right? Mm -hmm. and it had three branches okay yeah and then the branches budded these delicioso delicious little grapes right and i took the grapes you took the grapes i took the grapes and i pressed them into pharaoh's cup and then mm -hmm, i woke up what does it mean just as like okay um let me think okay so the three branches represent three days okay in three days pharaoh is actually gonna give you your old job back you know hence the cup oh that's sick thanks joseph part six Bible stories with Liv. The story of Joseph, part six. So Joseph just interpreted the cupbearer's dream and told him that he's actually going to get his job back. But then Joseph's like, okay, hold up, bro. When you get promoted back, you have to talk to Pharaoh and tell him that I did nothing wrong and that I don't deserve to be in prison. He's like, dude, for sure, for sure. I got you. And then the baker's like, bro, it's my turn. Joseph's like, cool, cool. Hit me with it. And the baker's like, okay, so I had these three cake baskets all balancing on the top of my head. And the top one was for Pharaoh, but there were birds eating out of it. Birds, birds eating out of it. Ew, gross. So what does it mean, Joseph? Hit me. And Joseph's like, okay, so the three baskets represent three days, right? In three days, uh-huh, Pharaoh is going to put you to death and hang you. I'm sorry, what? I said what I said. Oh, come on. It's a little bull crap. So three days passed and everything that Joseph said was going to happen, happened. The cupbearer got promoted back to his old job and the baker got, mm, you know, the stanky boot. But the cupbearer didn't remember to tell Pharaoh about Joseph. Story ain't done, part.